Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin and I thought today I'd try something a little bit different. I've done this one in portrait mode rather than the usual landscape one I do. And this is a, an imaginary forest scene I uh, painted. So we've got some nice bit of light in the sky, sort of casting its, casting then some shadows from the trees either side. This foreground path leading to our young couple heading off into the woods. But I think the, the, the portrait style rather than the landscape, Polly's Open Method, works really well with these tall tree type paintings. But before I show you how I painted this, let's have a look at the uh, quick look at the materials. Then the colours we've got ultramarine, cadmium yellow, Payne's grey, these are in crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. I only used the uh, two brushes, we've got the large Ron Ranson hake and a little number three rigger. And the paper was 15 by 11 watercolour paper. So let's start this off with a bit of clean water. I'm using the large hake and I'm just going all the way down the page. This will just soften off the background, no hard edges. So some distant trees can sort of really fade away and help with recession. I'm going to go a bit of, a bit of raw sienna, a bit more water. Just dip the corner into the water jar. Raw sienna, a bit of cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to push it in, fairly random. Raw sienna, cadmium yellow, touch of ultramarine. Just trying to get plenty of variation on the greens. A bit more yellow, a bit more water. Raw sienna. I'm sort of always bearing in mind, I'm just looking for some, trying to leave just a touch of white of the paper, and that'll act as like the, the light shining through the trees. Just working this way down to the bottom. More water. Cadmium yellow, a more raw sienna, until eventually we'll arrive down there. Right, so that's the lightest section, so a bit more yellow, a bit more blue now. Introduce a few darker shades of green, and so I'm just popping it in, dancing around the page. down there and a lot of this will act as like sort of foliage on mass so to speak I'm not going to paint in every individual leaf right so that's the main bit of background next I'm going to Put a little bit of water on the brush, on the on the palette. I'm going to take a bit of burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of cadmium yellow, and then I'm going to put in the distant trees. So just flicking up with a little rigger brush. Go the right hand side, Come over here on the left. What you don't want at this stage is for your paper to start drying just yet, you want to get these trees in while it's still damp. And they'll just soften off nicely into the distance as the paper dries. So you can just about just about see them. Bring those down a little bit lower. A little bit low down. Paper has stretched slightly, so I might just, I'll just give that a quick stretch. So it's flat against the plywood. Just pull it tight, refix it with the clips. You can stretch it before you start painting if you want. It's entirely up to you. Some people stretch it and then put masking tape around it, but it's. There's, there's one or two ways of doing it. 
So let's go back to the rigger brush, a bit more brown, a bit more blue, a bit more yellow. Pop a few more of these in. And these are the trees we'll see in the distance through the ones that we put in the foreground. And even put a few little just hints of twigs and, and branches. And so all I'm doing, I'm just picking up the paint that's already on the paper. Just very subtle little lines even there, especially over this lit area there. Deliberately putting them over there so they're easy to see and contrast nicely against the light in the distance. A few around there, a few around there, just dancing around with the rigger brush. Right, let's switch to the big brush now. So I'm going to put a few more in, but these ones are going to be a little bit thicker. Same colours, bit of brown, bit of blue, bit of yellow. Less water, more paint. Paper's still a little bit wet. And so I'm just and I'm just using the sort of chisel edge brush to pop these in. Just enough water to hold all the hairs together like so. And then some sort of going up in all different directions, don't do them all doing in the same direction, equally spaced apart because it looks so artificial remember nature grows all different directions all different shapes and sizes so that's a few more these ones you'd, I'd imagine slightly closer back to the rigger brush put a few leaves on there, not leaves, branches I'll put the leaves on last bit of dry brush work and again because these are thicker because it's a thicker mix now you can see already these were thicker so it's those ones the first ones we put on look even further away now than they did generally do them in three three layers of trees the last ones will go in these will push these ones back as well and look even create more sense of depth, you're always trying to create depth in your painting, the more layers the better. That's a few twigs, branches, things even there. Right. That's two layers in. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to clean the brush, I'm just going to squeeze that water out. It's fairly dry, not too much water, I'm just going to define where I want the land to go. So I'm just going to take a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of cadmium yellow, right, it's quite a dry brush, very little water on there. I'm just using it to imagine now which way the land is sloping. So if we say, so it's sort of coming down there like that. So path might just come sweeping around there, something like that. Fly out of there. And then sort of so come around there and get off something like that. Down there and then back that way. So that's just, just a rough. Maybe that could have done with being a little bit lower. I don't know. See, I've gone hard, a horizon line now has gone almost slap bang in the middle. Not to worry. Um, because we could always raise it a little bit. Oh, I'll, I'll leave it like for now. Then. Right, so here's our sort of path. This gives me a sort of path there leading through the woods. Now, I want thicker, 
thicker paint now and put some more trees in so because this is quite dry I'm just dipping the tips into the water just to bring all the hairs back together and then same colours again that we did the other trees with a bit of burnt umber that's too wet it's too wet it's all I've done I'm just dabbing it on some tissue I've got here just to the right of my palette on the easel bit of brown, bit of blue, maybe a bit of cadmium yellow as well right, let's have our trees sort of frame this path a little more so I'm going to put one one there, look, see that cuts across this lit area almost sort of emphasising that light we have one, let's have a big one, sort of doing up there like that. And then we can have another one, this one's going around the back of that one. And up that way. And let's have another one that goes up there like that. Again, sort of framing the, the path through the woods. Another one that's going up there. One up there like that. Let's put some branches on now. So I'm back to the little brush, bit of brown, bit of blue, bit of yellow. You'll need plenty of water because otherwise it'll just keep drying off. And you can see, let's put those twigs straight across that lit area there. You can see the, the difference it makes, really helps. twigs and branches so I'll put these in and then what I might do I might actually this is like say the third layer if you like and then I think on the fourth layer I might have a really big tree in the foreground somewhere just whacking straight up there but before I do that I'll put these twigs in first and then a bit of dry brushwork and pop a few leaves a bit of foliage there in the woods Um, before I do that, I might, I'm going to need to dry it slightly, so bear with me. Let's make sure this is flat against this wood. So I'm just pulling it tight against the board, just so it's flat against the surface of the wood. Refix it with these clips and then I'll just dry it with the hair dryer. Just a quick dry. Oh, this doesn't have to be bone dry. It's just but we do need a bone dry brush really. So I'm just squeezing the water out, take the rest out on the tea towel, just press down, scuff it up against there. And then the idea is when we put all the leaves on, you sort of put them, imagine like each, each hair is an individual leaf. So sort of putting them in, in great whacking bundles, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of cadmium yellow. Just dab, dab, dab. And because the brush is quite dry, you're not going to block it all in and obscure what you've done in the background. You can still see through. Bit of ultramarine there to the mix. It's making a slightly darker green. Bit of ultramarine. Bit of cadmium yellow. Something down here as well. Something growing. Something growing over there. I'm sticking up, picking up some big dollops of raw sienna. There's a few nice leaves for us. And I'm just twisting the brush, so you just twisting the brush around as I do, just trying to get random shapes. Right, let's clean that. 
squeezing out some of that water and it's just going straight into that cadmium yellow and what I want to do see how these trees don't quite look quite natural so I just want to sort of bed them in so to speak bed them in so it looks as if they're actually growing and that just plunks on top of the soil Picking up a little bit of raw sienna there as well. Again, just continuing to define this little path that's running through the woods. Again, this path sort of snaking around. Predominantly a bit of cadmium yellow with a bit of raw sienna stuck on my brush. A bit more down there. So what we need now is a, I'm going to stick another great big whacking tree. I'm thinking. Well, that's the lowest we come to there so I think come down a little bit and say I'm thinking somewhere about there and just whack it straight in don't mess about with it as soon as you, as soon as you sort of start faffing around that's when things take a turn for the worse it's best to just get on with it so I'm just going a bit of brown a bit of blue nice dark mix and this should silhouette nicely against this loose area. Just wondering where to take it. Um, should I go that far? Let's go up there and then up there like that. And down there. Should I might even go off there? Wonder if it's doing up there. I'm gonna pull it bother with tweaks and so I'm gonna imagine this is really tall going right off. And all the twigs are at the top out of sight. So what I think I need now are some shadows. So what I'm going to do, I want it quite dark, so a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue, quite a dark shadowy mix. I just want to get enough on the brush so I can just do them all in one go without having to reload the brush. Um, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards blue, a sort of blue tint to it, grey, grey, bluey tint. And then, when I think I've got enough, just a nice chisel edge brush like that. Now I can imagine that the, the sun's somewhere, somewhere central, or just up at the top of the scene, and I'm just sort of following, following the line of the sun, so it sort of comes away like that. There's another shadow, a shadow there, another shadow there. Let's just darken those a little bit. Just need to reload that brush a little bit. Again, coming down there. Shadow coming down there. Down there. Another one there. Got a few coming from behind, just out of shot. Getting the big one, so that big shadow down there. That's for that one. Just darken that a little bit. Well, I also want to try and imagine as a few little. Just take a little bit of that off on the t-shirt. A few little. find this path a little bit better so what I'll do is uh, 
clean the brush. Let's go for a little bit of, bit of raw sienna, bit of burnt umber, bit of ultramarine. So if we start, if we say, going down there like that. on this side there. You can see they just, just this little path it's starting to emerge. I could just whack the path in but I just, I just like to try and leave it and see what see what it looks like. Something like that. Um, You really, I should have done that before I did the shadows, but not to worry. I've got a, an almost identical shadow mix, I think. So now I'm sort of just continuing at these over there. And a few little shadows cast by these little stones. And again, a few shadows along there. darker areas up, up in the treetops. I think all I want to do now, I'm fairly happy with that, just trying to get that balance between light and dark. So we've got our light area there. So checking I've got enough sort of shadowy areas, but I'm fairly happy. So I'm, I'll finish with the hat now, I'll put the hat away. I think we just need like a little couple, a young couple walking through the uh, woods. So, so switching to the little, little Riga brush. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna be about here, aren't they? Somewhere like There's the man, little bed on at the top, and then next to him, for a little shorter female friend, and then put her legs next to, next to him there. And then obviously, they've got little, obviously little wobbly, wobbly little shadow coming off them. thing I'm going to do in this picture pop our little bird in there and I'm going to call that one finished so let's just last but not least whoops we can brush just going to find a little Little dry corner, so I can stick my name down there somewhere. And I'm going to call that one finished. So let's see what it looks like with the mains on. 
So this is the finished painting in its uh, main. So if we go in and have a closer look at it, the painting began with a uh, sort of raw sienna cadmium yellow wash all the way down to the bottom of the page. But I was careful just to leave this lit area here up in the sky where the, the imagine like the light and the sun's going to be shining from. And then between all these trees, you can just about see the first ones that I did with the rigger brush. Because the paper was still wet, they faded right off and looked really far away. Then there was the sort of second layer, including these sorts here. And then a third layer, where the paint just gets stronger and stronger mix. Which basically means more paint, less water. And so the foreground one, it was about the fourth layer I put in when the paper was pretty much dry, this big, big strongly painted in tree, darkest tones. And then you can see always most effective where you sort of push them so that they're silhouetted against the light, creates the maximum amount of drama. So we've got the light up here, casting a few shadows coming down either side of these trees, either side of the path rather, from the trees, either banked either side. I wanted to define, this past wasn't really very well defined, so I'll just put in a bit of burnt on about ultramarine, sort of darkish mix, make sort of muddy banks so that I could scrape these rocks in either side, just to define that path which leads up to our little figures there, like a young couple, little shadow coming from them as well as they head off into the light and the, and the, the woods beyond. Also use that same shadow colour just to create some dark in the tree area and then like a few sort of shadowy bushes in the distance either side. Well that's it for today's paints and I hope, I hope you like that. Don't forget to paint along with me. Um, don't forget to keep practicing as well. Very best of luck to you and I'll see you again soon.